What is a bone marrow biopsy? Why are they necessary? What testing is done on the bone marrow biopsy sample? So bone marrow biopsy is basically a procedure where uh, we go into the bone marrow and get a sample. Bone marrow is inside your bones. That's where all the blood cells are made. So all your blood cells are produced there. Uh, bone marrow biopsies are extremely critical for diagnosis of multiple myeloma because that's where the plasma cells are, um, you know, that are actually, you know, the cancerous ones. So to be able to diagnose the disease, you need a bone marrow biopsy. It's important not just for quantification, you know, it gives us a sense of how many plasma cells are present in the bone marrow and what the burden of disease is. So that's one reason why we get the biopsy at baseline. I think the more important reason is to then look at the genetics of those myeloma cells. So we are now able to do several genetic tests called FISH tests on that bone marrow sample, which then gives us a stage. You know, so your staging is now incorporated into your FISH results, which means that there are some patients that may have high risk uh, mutations present in their myeloma cells and some that have kind of more of the standard risk mutations. And we cannot get that information right now uh, outside of some research labs. We can't get that on a clinical basis other than the bone marrow biopsy. So it's really critical, one, again, for quantification and also then to determine the genetics of your individual uh, disease. When and how often should bone marrow biopsies be done? So we do want a diagnosis, uh, obviously, uh, for the reasons I just mentioned. Um, going forward, it really just depends on what information we're trying to get out of the bone marrow biopsy, right? So if patient is in a great disease response, for example, and we can measure that using blood tests, you know, such as their light chains in the blood or M protein concentrations in the blood, that gives us a sense of what's going on most of the time in the bone marrow. But for us to truly know that the disease is no longer present there at a detectable level, a bone marrow biopsy is sometimes done to confirm whether they have now had what we call a complete response or a complete remission. So that's one phase where it's done as patients start therapy. We've also recently seen the data with MRD or minimal residual disease. Uh, what that is is a test done on the bone marrow specimen to look for a certain sequence that the myeloma cells have. And, and now we can detect it or not detect it at a very, very deep level in one in a million cells using that MRD test. So that's another space where there's a test now approved, uh, which can give us some prognostic information about a patient's um, disease, and that is done on a bone marrow sample. So that's when we kind of do a subsequent sample. And then at the time of relapse, you know, when patients do experience a disease relapse, we do recommend a bone marrow biopsy at that time. The reason for that is we want to see what's changed. So it does, again, it confirms usually the recurrence of those plasma cells, but the genetics now may be different. So if you have one at diagnosis and you have one at relapse, we can then compare to see what new mutations a patient may have acquired, which then can then play into sort of what we consider to be uh, perhaps the aggressiveness of their disease in that moment, and that could dictate the type of therapy that we may choose. If my doctor can tell I have myeloma from my blood work and imaging, why is a bone marrow biopsy necessary? This comes up a lot, and it's where patients, you're right, if the, I, I, there are certain criteria where just by the blood test or the imaging alone, you can confirm a diagnosis of multiple myeloma. For example, if the kappa to lambda to free light chain ratio is wildly off, that is considered myeloma defining. If there are lytic lesions and that seem to match diagnosis of myeloma, I would consider that myeloma defining. But the bone marrow biopsy is imperative. I'm hoping for a world where it is, we have better blood-based assays to assess for this, but we're not there yet. The important part to remember is that the light chains are not themselves the cancer. The serum-free light chains are a protein produced by the cancer cells. They're a biomarker produced by the cancer cells. They're helpful for us because they, they're easy to check. It's very easy to check blood work, but I would say at times of big decision-making, for example, at diagnosis, it's imperative to get a good look at the cancer cells themselves to see what's going on. What does a bone marrow biopsy do? It actually shows us what's going on inside the bone marrow. There are a couple of things that would very dramatically change my management based on what I see in there. The most important example is uh, what we call FISH, fluorescent in situ hybridization. So in the patient cells are fine, but the myeloma cells sometimes have certain genetic or chromosomal. Chromosomes are the big, you know, we all of us have 46 of them, the big pockets of DNA that are all put together. They can have, the myeloma cells can sometimes have certain set of genetic abnormalities that render them a bit more resistant to traditional therapies. Some of you from other videos in this course may know about standard risk versus high risk. That's what I'm talking about. And you cannot tell standard versus high risk from blood testing. That is from the bone marrow biopsy. And that does change our management. For patients who have high risk myeloma, I may approach their transplant differently. I may approach their post-transplant maintenance. I might use two drugs instead of one drug. I might use consolidation. And I think that's very important to know. Other useful information from the bone marrow biopsy where I think it's very important. There have been cases where 
on the bone marrow biopsy, I see other issues going on. For example, AL amyloidosis, which is a qualitative issue where the proteins, in addition to the cells being a problem, the proteins are forming clumps, and that's helpful to know because that can cause us own problems. So I think those are two reasons. Again, the higher type of genetics being the biggest part of it. And it's also helpful to know where we started. So, you know, at the end of the day, again, the light chains are not the cancer. The cancer is the cancer. The cancer are those cells hiding inside the bone marrow biopsy. So if you know what percent of the bone marrow was involved by the myeloma at the beginning, it gives you a very good apples to apples comparison of where things stand afterwards. The final thing I'll say about that is, um, you know, for those of you who are listening who are interested in measurable residual disease, or MRD, Every year, everything I say is, becomes irrelevant because the field is, rap is so rapidly evolving. But as of right now, the most commonly used MRD assays are based off bone marrow. And so, you know, for one of them, for example, next generation sequencing, which in the US is often done by a company called Adaptive and called ClonoSeq testing, that does require the initial bone marrow biopsy to quote unquote fingerprint the myeloma cells to actually identify unique DNA sequences only about them, not about your cells, just about the myeloma cells, and they can then look for those fingerprints down to one in a million on a future bone marrow biopsy. And we can run that fingerprinting off the initial bone marrow biopsy even if it was done years ago, as long as the samples are saved. So again, to summarize, there are many reasons that I think a bone marrow biopsy is imperative. Um, the biggest one is understanding standard versus high reset of genetics. The second reason is to look for other things going on. Some patients can have myelodysplasia, which are other issues with the bone marrow, or they can have amyloid deposition, which is helpful for you to know. And three, that bone marrow biopsy may come in handy later because there may be certain tests that I can run off that, for example, measurable residual disease or MRD assays that may be helpful down the line. Why are bone marrow biopsies repeated periodically after the initial bone marrow biopsy at diagnosis? So uh, until we find a better way to evaluate disease biology, um, I think um, the bone marrow biopsies are going to be a very important part of um, you know, your, your journey in myeloma. Um, each time myeloma comes back, the disease biology um, is, is different from, from before. So it's important for us to under not just understand it, uh, we, we are starting to get to a place where we can tease out what therapies patients need uh, for, for certain subsets. So I think it's, it's, it's important. Uh, myeloma is not one disease. Even within a given patient, it's not the same. You have many different clones of myeloma. So as the disease evolves, it's important to kind of uh, keep a check on some of those things. Patients do pick up other abnormalities that they did not have at the time of diagnosis, and we won't know about them unless we're doing a repeat biopsy. What testing is done on the bone marrow biopsy sample? Most myeloma centers would be doing um, cytogenetics, uh, fish panels as a standard of care, along with flow cytometry, and then we look at certain markers on, on the bone marrow aspect and biopsy. Um, and then we are doing gene mutational panels um, in, in the context of certain clinical trials or, or, or projects to tease out specific gene mutations that patients may have.